Welcome to the watermelon fields, boys and girls. One ounce Kent deer slugs moving at 1750 versus some watermelons. <laughs> well, alrighty. <laughs> well, eat it or wear it, boys and girls. Welcome back. This is Eric here with iWrite Veteran 8888. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a really cool firearm, okay? This is the Kalishnikov USA Comrade. Bears a lot of resemblance to the Sega 12. We're going to go over that, of course, uh, a little bit here as we go. I uh, definitely would like to thank the folks at Moss Pond. I was in there hanging out with Michelle, and she had one of these, and I've been wanting to check one out for quite a while. Uh, so she let me take this one home and do a video uh, for you guys. Definitely an interesting piece of hardware. We'll get into it as we go. They are temperamental like most Sega 12s can be, but uh, we'll definitely get into it. All right, I got some sodas down there. All right, we're just running open sights, you know, really uh, short pistol length sight radius. Uh, duplex broadheads, <laughs> one ounce uh, broadheads. Of course, our wind is blowing everything around, but that is a really mean slug. Okay, let's see if we can hit those uh, soda bottles from back here. All right, woo, son. Okay, no pressure. Not quite enough gas for those. Woo, yeah. Okay, let's talk about this thing a little bit. So it kind of falls into that really strange legal course, right, when it comes to this type of stuff. This is actually not an NFA item, all right? It transfers as a firearm. It is considered a firearm. All right, so the overall length is 26 inches in its shortest configuration. Okay, it has a standard length four in. A lot of the hardware and components, bolt, grips, trigger, gas system components, four ends, muzzle devices, um, lots of stuff on this gun are compatible and derived directly from the Sega 12. This is a US produced gun. We have an SB3 brace, okay, on here. Now the brace does extend, but it only collapses so far putting the minimum length of the gun into the 26 inch category. All right, it's not a SBS, and this, this gun is allowed to have a factory foregrip on it, okay, because it falls into that firearm status, okay? Um, think in the same type of territory as your TAC-14s and things like that. It is a magazine-fed firearm, okay, that happens to fire 12-gauge shotgun ammo, which is really cool. All right, so we have the gas system here set to the high brass territory. Now I noticed when I pulled the gas plug all the way out and inspected the gas ports on this gun, the manifold, the gas block itself, does obscure the forwardmost gas port just a little bit. So I think the gas settings on this gun for what they're supposed to be are definitely off. But that's not an uncommon thing with an S12 style of gun. Uh, if you guys know any of the old school Sega imports, uh, that you get into what they're what are called vodka guns all right and we call them vodka guns because they were assembled on a uh, friday and everybody's ready to get out <laughs> for the weekend and maybe already start sampling some vodka before they leave the the plant for the day you know falling asleep behind the wheel let me just see if i can get that gas system adjusted out for you guys here okay yeah, you got to press this little detent down. All right, and then we're just going to open this gas system up to the uh, low brass setting. Okay, now we're on the low brass setting. So there are two adjustable gas settings for the Comrade. The low brass setting is meant to run, obviously, low brass shells, lower pressure. It's allowing more of the gas into the system for a lower pressure round. And then the high brass setting is meant for your higher brass stuff. Well, we were just shooting one ounce slugs. If that's not a high brass load, I don't know what is, but on the high brass setting, you saw that even the one ounces were struggling 
Now the ones moving at 1750 at higher pressure were cycling no problem. And those are throwing out in a perfect ejection pattern, okay? Now I'm gonna leave it set to the low brass setting, but what we found is on the low brass setting, it'll run you know, your full power buckshot, slugs, and uh, bird shot that are in the 13 to 1400 feet per second range like really well. So hopefully I won't eat my words here. We are introducing a couple of variables into the situation. Those are five shot boxes that uh, ship with the firearm. There's also many, many, many Sega 12 magazines available out there, okay? Everything from MD Arms, SGM Tactical, uh, those are available. I've got some APGs here. Uh, plenty of options for magazines, okay? Pro Mag makes them, tons of options. These are the eight shot mags, or I'm sorry, 10 shot mags for the SDS Lynx. These uh, represent some of the cheapest S12 mags that you can possibly get. These things are dirt cheap. Let's try them, see if they work. You know, not to introduce an additional variable such as a magazine of questionable uh, uh, quality, but they seem to be made pretty well, all right? Let's give them a shot. And they are kind of translucent. You can see through them a little bit. Okay. All right, 10 shot mag. Okay, we're on the low brass setting. Let's see, now this is Express Extreme Long Range, number six shot, number six bird, a one and one quarter ounce load moving at 1330. We'll see how they run. <laughs> well, all right. Well, those mags aren't going to work, I guess. So we'll just set those. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll try the other one just for fun. With that forward grip in place, those mags are kind of hard to get in and out. All right, we'll see if it runs. Failure to feed. A waste of money. All right, APG clear mags with the Winchester buckshot. Let's try this out. Now, these clear mags are cool and they look cool, but they don't hold up very well. I've actually already noticed when I was loading my other clear APG that it's already broke on the front. So we'll see if that runs. Maybe this one will break, I don't know. Let's give it a try. That mag definitely locks up nice. All right, let's see if this runs. This is buckshot ammo, Winchester. Okay, well that worked. Definitely no complaints there. Okay, so the Winchester buck, that's good. And of course those slugs ran out of the five rounders really nice. Let's uh, try the 1330s again out of this particular gun. <laughs> Maybe this mag won't break. Let's give it a try. All right, bird shot. Yeah. I mean, despite that front end of that mag lug being cracked off, that seemed to run okay. Um, I will say that these guns are not without their amount of teething issues. And the Sega 12 is inherently guilty of that as well. Uh, we've had really good luck out of the Vepers and I like this gun and I want to like it, but if I can't ever get it running reliably, it's, it's nothing more than really a range toy. I'm, I'm not sure it's something that I would trust my life to. And I've always kind of had that distinction about magazine fed shotguns that they have kind of questionable reliability. Um, you know, of course the Fostec Origin has been a pretty solid reliable gun, especially with stick mags. 
Um, it seems that the reliability issues tend to get even worse as you start to add drum magazines on the uh, S12. So here's a Pro Mag 12 shot. We'll see how it runs. And look, I'll try to run this one just kind of slow and methodical, and maybe the slow-mo will give us an idea of what's going on. And I just want it to be known that if I set the gas setting to what is supposed to be on this gun, what it says in the manual, it will not run. It won't even, won't even uh, kick the bolt back all the way. Okay, let's give it a shot. I'm just going to go slow methodical, Chad. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Now I do like the fact that on this particular firearm, they did add the, uh, the notch in the safety to lock the bolt to the rear. Now one distinct feature that this gun has separate from an S12 is there is no last round bolt hold open from the standpoint of being able to uh, get to it from the outside of the gun or anything like that. So there is no last round bolt hold open in that regard. All in all, pretty cool though. I mean, I do like it. It's well thought out and I do like the fact that it's non-NFA, which is super, super convenient, of course, um, <clears throat> because you shouldn't have to pay an extortion tax to own whatever gun you want. This is a cool way to kind of skirt those things. And you know, you're seeing that a lot with uh, not only the braces, but you look at stuff like the firearms, you know, things in the firearms category. But the more and more of this stuff gets out there and the more it's in just common use and more and more people have it, you know, you obviously see that there's no distinct change in the way people approach things. So it is no more dangerous than anything else, okay? Although the media, would, of course, would have you believe those things. It's a cool concept. I mean, I, I do like it. I did try this particular gun with the TAC-47 auto plug. And for the life of me, no matter what I did, I could not get the TAC-47 to function at all, okay? I had nothing but problems, uh, failure to eject, failure to feed, all kinds of issues, okay? I found that only by putting the factory plug back in the gun were we able to get anything even close to some resemblance of reliability out of the gun, okay? It is a cool concept. I do like it. I think it has a purpose that is really cool. Unless you can get the reliability 110% crystal clear and right in there, it's not something I probably would trust my life to. Um, but it is certainly a cool piece of hardware that you can scratch the itch of having a shorty without having to actually go through any bull crap to do it. Um, it is a very cool and interesting concept. I do like it. All right, I'm going to fire a couple of more of the bird, the uh, 300 or 1330 feet per second bird ammo. Sorry. All right, five shot mag. All right, I'm gonna rip these out of here about as fast as I can and maybe this thing will work, okay? <laughs> All right, that's cool. Good stuff. You know, uh, it's just kind of hard to say overall, you know. The reliability, you know, time will tell. Um, it, it does concern me about the gas block kind of being obscured like that. Uh, you know, you can open these things up, pull the gas blocks off, open them up. You can angle the ports. You know, you can do port work on them. I've done a lot of Sega 12 conversions over the years. Ray and I both have. And um, these guns have a tendency to be very uh, finicky, okay? And they either work really, really well or they only work somewhat decent or they just flat out don't work at all if they're not set up right. So it'll be real interesting to see how this thing stands the test of time, how it holds up. Uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll report back and let you guys know. We're going to shoot the gun some more. Uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We post all kind of behind the scenes stuff there. Uh, so make sure you're following us there. Uh, guys, thanks so much. I definitely would like to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters, those of you who purchase t-shirts over on Ballistic Inc., those of you who purchase man cans over on the website. We've got some great man cans for sale. Check them out. We hand select all the gear. I know you guys are going to love them. If you like the channel, you like what we do, and you wish to support us, those are the most direct ways you can do so. All right, well, time will tell. I, I'm not 100% sold on the Comrade yet. Uh, you know, we're going to have to really see. We'll dive back down the rabbit hole on this. This is really intended to be kind of a first look. We'll see how it holds up. Have a good one, guys. See you next time.